Hey guys, Iwolf here, um, and today I've got a very special video for you guys. I've um, been working on this for a long time, and hopefully uh, you guys will really appreciate this. Uh, it's been a long time in the works, and uh, it's something I have a lot of experience in regarding World of Warcraft, and I'm, like I said, really looking forward to talking about this video today. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, Paladin leveling but not the usual type of leveling. You know, usually when you see leveling guides, it's about solo leveling. Um, no, today, so I'm talking about dual leveling. And for those of you that don't know what dual leveling is, it's basically leveling in a pair, you know, with someone else. Um, it's uh, been growing in popularity in the last couple months, and uh, thanks to users like Cargos and uh, other people that have been theorycrafting a lot of things for dual leveling. Um... And I personally think it's one of the better ways to level. Um, I know some might say, oh, just stick it solo, some, or get a five mana, go dungeon grind or something. Um, but, you know, those are all very good, and uh, everyone has their own way they like to level, and I like to level in a duo. Um, and so today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of a duo, and then the pros and cons of a paladin in a duo, and then what a paladin can do in a duo with every class in the game, and then... Uh, how you should spec for most duos as a paladin um and like i've said in my other videos disclaimer these are not the, my, my guides should not be taken as law you know don't be like oh this guy said you have to do this or you have to do that no uh my videos are just a uh i guess you could call it like a recommendation you know uh like what i rec what i recommend you do you don't have to do it everyone has their own style and way they like to spec and play so feel free to play however you want this is just the way i like to do it so um i will start the video off here uh why dual level so dual leveling it allows certain classes to become uh, a lot faster at leveling um namely warriors uh paladins especially uh classes that are traditionally very slow solo levelers uh they become a lot faster in a duo um, uh, grinding mobs is a lot faster for some classes that, uh, it's more efficient like single target classes that can't AOE very well can AOE grind in the right duos for example Warrior Paladin um, my partner uh, Storm the Gates, Goose God, he has a bunch of different tags uh, he's the guy I'm going to be dual leveling with on Classic he's playing a Warrior and we're doing Warrior Paladin um, <clears throat> after playing our duo a couple times we actually realized that we can AOE quite reliably as a warrior paladin with like a cleave, or a ret or a consecration build, etc., etc., um, and you know usually warriors are known for AOE grinding, and so being in a duo can you know open up some possibilities like this. Um, more survivability and utility uh, in a duo. You have the buffs and spells of two classes instead of just one, so you have a lot more uh, room and space for like errors to be made and you have a lot more utility to uh just give you more flexibility while you're out in the world questing and uh, what you can do uh, much more fun definitely a big pro uh some people don't like leveling some people do enjoy leveling um dual leveling is just really fun you know tr coordinating with your partner you know uh, figuring out what you're gonna do and how you're gonna approach each quest like in a duo it's just a lot more fun when you have someone else to talk to and do it with alongside your uh, 1 to 60 uh, route. So, potential decrease in downtime, chain pulling, mana to regen boss, etc., etc. Um, so, what's nice about a duo is that um, you won't be taking as much damage and you won't be spending as many resources to kill things because there'll be two of you. So, um, it really decreases your downtime because you're not having to sit and drink or sit and eat as much as you usually would or sit and wait for debuffs to go away, etc., etc. Um, so that's a really nice uh, upside to duo leveling. Uh, so here are some of the cons. Scheduling with another player can be tricky. I found this to be the hardest thing in a duo, um, which honestly is kind of funny uh, that this is like the hardest thing and probably the worst thing about the duo. Um, me, I know the person I'm duo leveling with. I'm a friend of, I'm like we're friends IRL, so we're able to like coordinate our skills a lot easier. Um, but for some people. Uh, it might be a little trickier to try and coordinate. All right, we're going to play from this time to this time. You know, be there, be there, be there. Um, so that, that, that can be kind of tricky uh, to set up. Uh, some classes are better off being solo. This is actually something I've come to realize a lot more while theorycrafting duel, like 
dual leveling comps, uh, like hunters and mages, um, especially, namely those two classes. I can't think of any other classes that are better off solo, but those are the two big ones that stand out. Um, double mage is not bad. It's People say it's like a god comp. Um, I disagree, but that's just because I don't like comps that are based solely on grinding mobs. Um, but hunters especially are much better off solo in most situations. Dual hunter is actually pretty good, in like one to ten when you don't have your pet. But once you get your pet, easy mode, just play solo. It's better. You're better off that way. Mage, kind of in the same boat. Uh, zones with a lack of mob density can cause a loss in XP per hour in a duo. Um, so, <clears throat> if you're like killing mobs so fast that you're having to wait for respawns constantly, then you're wasting a lot of your XP. Um, or like XP that you could be getting. Um, so that's one of the downside to a duo is that you, sometimes you kill things too fast, which seems a little weird, right? Um, so let me move on. All right, why duo as a paladin? So pros, very easy to play in a duo. It's not hard to play a paladin. Paladins are a very easy class to figure out. Their healing is very simple. Their damage is very simple. Their buffs and auras and whatnot are very, very straightforward and simple. Massive utility and support for other classes. Uh, this is done through blessings, auras, seals, etc., etc. Um, this is one of the main reasons you take a paladin in a duo, um, because the blessings are such a nice buff to some classes like warriors. Like blessing might not warriors insane. Uh, retribution aura is really good for AOEing, um, sealing wisdom or uh, sealing light on a target can be really good to help like the. Uh, the person you're doing with get mana or health back things like that um, uh, So the next pro they can tank or heal very effectively in a duo um, Usually you don't take a paladin for the damage in a duo usually you take them because of the buffs and the healing But they can also tank very well in a duo, uh, which is yeah I'll talk more about that later on, but they're very flexible in their roles. They can do a lot of different things um, really effective in allowing classes to AoE grind or AoE grind themselves. Uh, so Red Aura, Blessing of Sanctuary, etc, etc. So what this means is, um, like I mentioned earlier about turning warriors into an AoE, like AoE grinding class, um, they can do this with a couple other classes, and this is done through their, their buffs and their uh, auras and whatnot. And uh, they can, they can, they're very good at AoE grinding themselves, and if you throw another AoE class on top of that, like for example Paladin Mage maybe, for example, or Paladin Warlock, which is a really insane comp, uh, you can make AoE grinding even more effective. Now, like I said, I personally don't like comps that are focused solely on AoE grinding, but some people do, so that's a really nice upside to pay, uh, playing a Paladin. Uh, free mount at 40, this is a huge deal for some classes. Um, you don't have to spend all that gold to get a mount at 40, which is a, a very important thing to do once you hit level 40. Um, so for me, I'm going to be, once I hit level 40 to get my mount, I'm just going to give all the gold that my partner needs for their mount, just give it to them so they can get their mount so we can be just as fast uh, leveling. So cons. I'll start talking about the cons of a, uh, of a paladin in a duo. So they're somewhat gear dependent. This is kind of a big issue. Um, they really need gear to keep up with uh, mobs in later levels. Uh, so that's kind of rough, uh, especially if you need more mana for healing or more survivability or a better weapon. A, big, a better weapon is a big problem that I find when leveling a paladin. Um, so keep that in mind that they're very gear dependent. Um, I need to sacrifice damage for heals. This isn't that bad because healing is healing. Healing is awesome. Um, but they don't have any damage or, or healing over time spells. So they can't be... Basically, time that they spend casting heals... Uh, is sacrificing DPS and uh, potential uh, faster kill speed. Um, but the upside to that is that you are getting more survivability from the heals. So it's it's not that bad of a con, but it's still worth noting. Um, While well, you have something like a priest or a druid that can just throw a, re a renew or a rejuvenation on someone, and they can get healed while you can keep going. Mana as a resource. I hate mana. Sucks. Oh my gosh. It's my least favorite resource in the game. Um, so drinking take waste a lot of time. Um, just have it, like when you get low, you have to drink a lot. You don't have this problem too much as a paladin because you have blessing wisdom, and usually you and your duo partner can usually be killing things pretty fast as a paladin through buffs and whatnot. That you don't have this problem too too much, but it is something to note because you will have to drink at times, um, especially on a uh, live non-private server where spirit isn't as strong. Early levels, very single target dependent, 
before you get Red Aura, you know, and Blessing of Sanctuary and Consecration and things like that, um, duo, most Paladin duos are very single target oriented. Um, and this isn't that bad, because you are nuking targets really fast. But uh, it is, like I said, worth noting. So most of these cons, you notice, aren't that bad of cons, but they're still cons. Um, so let me move on. Why dual level is Retribution? All right, so now I'll start talking about the three Paladin specs and their utility and usage in various duos. Um, so I'll start with Retribution. What are the pros? Highest damaging and most aggressive Paladin spec. So what does this mean? So, of course, most damaging, very obvious. But, but what does most aggressive mean? Um, most aggressive Paladin spec means you're basically able to kill single targets very, very fast uh, with this duo, or with this spec in a duo. Um, so you're able to constantly just keep a tempo, like a good pace of single target um, grinding and just taking care of single target mobs. Um, so this is done through Seal of Command, which is a really nice ability, uh, especially if your um, partner has a really, uh, really good stun on hand. Uh, you can do crazy damage with Seal of Command, which is really nice. Two uh, two weapon spec is also really nice. Do that extra damage with two handers, uh, always really great. Uh, they have a lot of offensive buffs and auras through Sanctity Aura, Improved Red Aura, Improved Blessing of Might, etc., etc. Um, this is really good if you're going for maybe like a double Paladin or like a Paladin plus. Uh, melee user. This is probably what you're going to want to spec into, because uh, I know warriors gain a lot from improved blessing might and improved ret uh, retribution aura. And secondary aura is always really nice if you're like with a priest or maybe like another paladin or something that does holy damage. Um, can still off heal reliably. Like the nice thing about paladins is that their healing is so good that you don't really need to spec into their healing uh, trees very much to still get very very good healing. Um, uh, and you're not really usually when you're playing as uh, leveling as a retribution, you're not uh, playing as the tank or taking the hits, so uh, you can still heal pretty reliably. Uh, cons lowest survivability technically uh, still has good survivability through like bubbles and whatnot, um, bubbles and heals, but still technically has the lowest. Um, not much access to defensive abilities like um, blessing of sanctuary, blessing of kings, um, some of the things in the holy tree. Those. That's kind of a downside, but you still have access to most of it. Um, Consecrate, which is your main AoE uh, damaging spell, like offensive spell, requires 11 points into the Holy Tree, which is a, kind of a big downside, uh, which really sucks. It's one of my least favorite things about Vanilla Paladins, is that you have to spec into Consecration in such an inconvenient tree uh, to get it. But still, it's, it's not too too far. Uh, it's only Tier 3, I think, so it's, it's not that bad. Alright, so why dual level is protection? So protection is spicy when it comes to duos. Very, 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 very spicy. Uh, and I'll talk about that now. The highest armor and survivability of any paladin spec. Um, you can be tanky as hell as a prot paladin while leveling. Uh, get yourself a sword and board and then have your yourself a healer behind you, dude. Like, you can just pull so many mobs and just never die. It's awesome. Um, access to insane amounts of reflect damage and defensive buffs, blessing of kings, uh, blessing of sanctuary, those are just two to note, those are very good. Blessing of kings is great for almost any class, like, any class can benefit from blessing of kings. Uh, and then blessing of sanctuary is great for AoEing. Uh, improved blessing of protection, also really nice, uh, you're gonna need that bubble off, uh, off cooldown a lot more, so you're gonna be playing really, really aggressive with your duo and pushing your maximum combat efficiency. Uh, you're gonna need that bubble on cooldown all the time, so, um... So that you can use to get out of bad situations. Holy Shield, great, great, uh, great, 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 great spell. It really helps with your AoE and uh, increases your block by a significant amount and deals holy damage every time you block. Um, so that plus a uh, blessing of sanctuary plus retribution aura, like you're doing some crane, uh, insane AoE, especially if you get consecration as well. Really great spell. Massive AoE tanking and grinding potential, like I kind of said, with Holy Shield and Red Aura, etc., etc. Uh, that's really great, especially if you stack it with, say, a um, like a Warlock, you know, or someone that can give you even more reflect damage or AoE, maybe like a Priest, you can use Holy Holy Nova and whatnot. Um, you can do some insane AoEing with this uh, with the spec. Reckoning is great for burst damage. You can uh, this won't work on classic, but on private servers, sit critting was really popular for uh, prop paladins to um, proc reckoning. It won't work on classic, but still definitely a very good talent. Uh, cons: 
mostly restricted to the sword and board for defensive talents and whatnot. Um, it's way less DPS than a two-hander. Um, way, way, way less. But it's not that bad, but it's it's still pretty... Like, in a duo, it's not that bad. Solo, it's really bad. But uh, two-handers are definitely better for DPS, for single-target DPS. Um, this is probably the most gear-dependent of all the Paladin specs, because you need to get a good one-hander, you need to get a good shield, and you need to get really good plate gear, or mail, and then later plate gear. Um, and also... Lastly, no forcing critical hits on classics. Uh, it's, it's less reliable to rely on things that rely on crits. Um, still good, still worth doing for sure, no doubt. I've had people tell me like, hey, or come to me and ask like, hey, is reckoning still worth, or hey, is readout still worth? And the answer is definitely yes, definitely, definitely yes. But it's uh, don't don't let it become a crutch for you on private servers because uh, that's gonna be a lot less re reliable when classic comes out. All right, why do a level is holy? Alright, so I'm dual leveling as a Holy Paladin. Uh, most well, I'm putting some points in Retribution. Uh, and I'll talk about the spec I'm doing personally for Classic when it comes out. Uh, but most of my points will be in the Holy Tree uh, come Classic. And I'll talk about why. Pros, Consecrate. Consecrate, Consecrate, Consecrate. Such a great spell. I love this spell. Uh, an AoE comp's best friend is a Paladin. Like, any, like, you throw this in with any class that has like a cleave or like any kind of AoE, like, it's great. Oh, you can just pull so much and just destroy things um it is very mana inefficient though uh so that's a that's really a big downside of consecrate so you're gonna be drinking a lot more but still a great spell for any aoe comp uh some of the most mana efficient burst healing in the game flash of uh flash of light is insane for leveling like it's crazy good so good um, specking into 5 out of 5 illumination for 100% mana back on crit heals, that's really nice. Drinking a lot less uh, on the crit heals. And you can raise your crit chance for healing like by a lot with the Paladin talents. So uh, you're getting your heals back constantly, which is really awesome. Um, some very strong early points. Uh, like your uh, plus 10% strength, plus 10% mana, 70% uh, less uh, knockback, or 70% 70, 70 chance to not get knocked back on your spells for healing. Like, there's some insane talents, like uh, Consecration, etc., etc. Uh, cons. Outside of Consecrate, not many offensive spells that you can get with uh, Holy. That's why, usually, in a duo, you can't go Deep Holy. You kind of have to go Holy something else, like Holy Ret or Holy Prot. Um, low DPS, stuck to using Seal of Righteousness, unless you hybrid spec. Seal of, I hate Seal of Righteousness. It's, it's really annoying to use, uh, especially while leveling. I don't, I don't really like it. I would much rather Seal of Command. Um... Can dungeon and level heal fine without specking it to holy? Uh, this is kind of what I mentioned earlier, actually, with retribution about off healing. You don't technically need to spec into holy to be a good healer for dungeons and for leveling. You really only need to spec into holy for raid healing. Um, and even then, you don't technically have to go that far. You only have to go to like illumination and maybe like. Uh... Now you definitely don't have to go down to holy shock and whatnot. Um, so you don't have to go that far into holy to uh, get by with your healing. Uh, it is it is really helpful though if you're playing a very support heavy paladin in like a duo or maybe even a three man. Um, so it's still good, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not uh, required basically to play a support paladin in a duo. Uh, later points not very useful for leveling. This is kind of like what I said. Like outside of like illumination is great, but that's kind of where it holy's utility for leveling kind of drops off. Um, it's just really all I have to say about Holy and the three Paladin specs. Uh, I will move on. All right. How are the Paladin duos? All right. This is my personal tier list on how I rank the Paladin duos, uh, like the comps that you can do. Um, in the top tier, we have Paladin Druid and Paladin Warlock. So I think the Holy Trinity of duo leveling is Paladin, Druid, Warlock. I know Kargos has said he thinks it's Paladin, Warrior, Warlock, but I think Druid's in there uh, instead of Warrior any day. Druid is insane. So, I'll go down the tier list. So, at the top we have Paladin Druid and then Paladin Warlock. Um, I'll talk about those, and I'll talk about all these actually uh, later on. And then in the high tier, we have the Paladin Warrior, Paladin Priest. The high tier is like the, the duos that are still really, really strong, but not like insane. Uh, so, Paladin Warrior for sure. Paladin Priest is also really good, but still a little experimental. Um, Mid-tier, Double Paladin, uh, Paladin Mage, Paladin Rogue. These ones are kind of like, they work. Um, like... I wouldn't do them if I'm trying to speed level, but they're still they're still strong because doing in general is strong. Um, 
and then low tier paladin hunter this is really the only low tier spec i or comp that i've found and uh low tier is just ones i wouldn't recommend i would just i would avoid this uh duo i mean if you can find a way to make it work by all means do it please prove me wrong but uh i, I don't think paladin hunter is a very strong composition paladin druid all right i'll start from the top of my tier list and work my way down so paladin druid how are you going to do it feral paladin duo that's what i call it so there's two ways you can do paladin druid uh, the first way is with the Druid as the tank and the Paladin supporting, and then one where the Paladin's the tank and the Druid's supporting. I would recommend the uh, one where the Druid is a tank and the Paladin is supporting, because it's like a better version of uh, Warrior Paladin. But uh, that's just my opinion. You can do it however you want. Um, so, Paladin Druid. I'll talk about this. The pros. Insane versatility and role filling. Can DPS heal or tank very well. Uh... The nice thing about this is that these two classes are hybrid classes, so they can do any role very well, while leveling at least. Uh, so that's really nice. So you can find dungeons for this uh, this comp very, very, very easily. It's uh, uh, if if you want to throw in dungeoning into your uh, leveling route. Plethora of buffs that can stack on each other for strong combos. Thorns plus Red Aura, that's insane for reflect damage. Mark of the Wild plus Blessing of Kings is great for getting all your stats up. Um, different armor and stat types, so you're not going to really be rolling on the same type of gear. Uh, like, Paladins will get ma uh, male gear, and then Druids will get leather or maybe cloth, and the stats that you're rolling on are going to be a lot different. Um, downtime's almost non-existent, um, which is really nice, because uh, the Druid's not taking that much damage. The only downtime you really take is when the Paladin has to drink, but that's very rare because of how little damage the Druid's usually taking if you're throwing up like the occasional flashlight and keeping him topped off you're really not struggling on mana especially if you have um uh blessing of wisdom like your downtime is like almost non-existent the druid can um, can pretty much constantly be pulling and you can even aoe a little bit with this as well if you get like consecration plus red aura um on the druid plus thorns you know he can do his like swipe aoe grinding basically or like his cleave uh, the Druid really has to pop out of form outside of clear cast procs, which is really nice. Um, he can basically stay in bear form the whole time, unless he wants to throw himself like a rejuve or throw you a rejuve or something. Uh, you should the Druid really shouldn't have to pop out of form at all, really, while you're like leveling. Uh, strong throughout the entire one to sixty root. There, the, this is something I've noticed with some uh, duos is that they have certain level brackets, like let's say like one to twenty, one to fifteen, you know. 25, 30, 30 to 37, just, you know, random brackets that they become very weak or that they become less effective than a duo or than a solo. Uh, with this duo, I haven't found any weak level brackets. Like, every point at which this duo is together, it seems strong. So, uh, that's one really nice pro of this comp. Cons. The Druid has access to travel form while Paladin has to wait till level 40 to get faster mobility. This one's negligible. Um, the Druid can just... Because he gets travel form at level 30, if, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's kind of... It kind of sucks that he has to basically neglect that to stay at, like with the Paladin and keep with him so he doesn't just shoot past him. But uh, this is, like I said, on here, very negligible. Uh, not that big of a deal. Because you're leveling so fast that you can get to 40 anyway pretty fast. I uh, need to constantly be p pulling multiple mobs while grinding or questing to stay hyper efficient. Um, you need to always, always, always be pulling and being on the go with this comp. This kind of goes for most comps, but uh, this comp especially because um, druids are so good for soul leveling that you have to make up for like having a paladin. Because having a paladin, like remember what I said about some classes are better off solo. Um, well, I think this comp is really really insane you have to make it hyper efficient and be playing it to the best uh, like the best of your ability to make it worth the druids time to group with the paladin i think it can be faster um but it requires a lot of skill and a lot of efficiency all right i'll move on to the next one oh right sorry i forgot uh so i have the specs up here of kind of like an example of how you would spec uh for each class in this duo um, so the Paladin spec, this is kind of what I would do. Um, I would get a... So I would get a Blessing of... Uh, or not Blessing of... Uh, yeah, Blessing of Kings, and then I would get Seal of Command for uh, the extra DPS, and I would get Improved Red Aura. Personally, you don't have to. You can forget it. I just like it. Uh, it's The damage you get from it is very negligible. Um, 
but uh, you can get that for the extra reflect damage. That plus improved thorns from the druid is really, really nice. Um, but besides these two talents, uh, you're mostly just going into uh, holy. So, and then for the druid, you are going to be going into mostly feral, but you're going to put a couple points into balance to get uh, improved thorns and omen of clarity for clear casts and uh, improved mark of the wild. Oh yeah, for the, the balance protection duo. So this is the other way that you could play a Paladin Druid. Um, it's not as optimal, but it's still fun and still very effective. Um, this one's a little more AoE focused. Basically the Druid's supporting the Paladin while the Paladin's AoEing a lot with like improved thorns and whatnot. Um, so you see here, uh, strong AoE potential for Consecrate, improved thorns, etc, etc. Uh, and the Druid has access to hot spells. So he can uh, DPS while heals are going off on the Paladin. Uh, the, f the faster single target kill speed during early levels, that's pretty nice because the Druid can uh, just be casting Wraths constantly and the Paladin can be nuking them with uh, Seal of Command, etc, etc. Uh, it has a lot more downtime because uh, the Druid has to drink uh, a lot more because he's running out of mana. And if you're AoEing, the Paladin also has to drink a lot. Um, so what else? Uh, the pattern holds aggro less consistently than the feral druid. That's kind of a downside, but it's not that bad. Uh, you're still holding th threat pretty well if um, the druid knows what he's doing. And also, it falls off at later levels if you aren't AOEing like really, really, really effectively. Um, uh, another pro, I actually didn't put this on here. I forgot to, but uh, I meant to. Uh, Innervate is really nice for paladins uh, to keep their downtime to a minimum. Uh, this applies for both this duo and for the other one. Uh, but yeah, Innervate is awesome for uh, for this duo. This is the spec that I came up with for this. You don't have to do this, but you can. Just a hybrid of like rest, balance resto uh, with a prot holy paladin. It's nothing too fancy, but uh, it's it's really fun. I really enjoy it. All right, now I'll talk about paladin warlock. Uh, I know some people think this comp is like god tier. I think it's very very strong, but I think there's a couple things that um kind of set this comp behind Paladin Druid, but I'll talk about that real quick. So what are the pros? Crazy amounts of utility through buffs and consumables, etc. like health stones, soul stones, blessing wisdom on the warlock, uh, etc. etc. Blood pact on the paladin is really nice. Uh, second reflect spell damage on the paladin, this is really awesome. Uh, so like fire shield, red aura, uh, and all the paladin AoE things is really nice. Um, the imp does insane DPS. That's like having a third person, but not having to share XP with them. So that's a, a big plus. Um, Blessing Wisdom and the Imp, the, the like it's the Imp's never going home, especially with the man the spirit changes on Warlock pets uh, for classic. We're well, not changes, but not what it is on private servers. Um, strong overall party DPS and very strong AOEing. This is a big deal. So you're stacking reflect damage through Holy Fire on the Paladin, or not Holy Fire, um, Fire Shield plus the Paladin's AoE things, and you're stacking that with like Hellfire or Reign of Fire, etc. from the Warlock, you can AoE very, very effectively with this comp. Um, the Warlock never struggles with mana because he gets healed after life tapping. That's really nice. Um, and then they both get free mounts at 40. That's a big deal right there, that they don't have to spend any gold at all to just be leveling so much faster once you hit 40. Um, Collins Paladin has to sacrifice DPS for healing the Warlock. Um, this is kind of the downside I found with most Warlock plus healer comps is that um, if you have Hots, like, to throw on the Warlock after his life tapping, it's even better because you can both be DPSing while he's getting his, basically, his mana back from getting healed. Um, so you have to stop what you're doing to heal him, which is kind of, it's kind of a downside, but it's not that bad. So, there's two specs for this that you can do. Um, there's a, a Prot Red spec and then a, um, another spec that I'll show you in a minute here. And uh, the Affliction Warlock. So I'm based for me. I do the same Paladin spec uh, for both of the uh, Warlock Paladin comps that I do, uh, but the main difference is the Warlock spec. So this spec is more so for questing. Um, this is like if you're doing like a hybrid of grinding, like AOE grinding and questing, uh, not like a hard grinding focused comp. Uh, this is just a very balanced. Uh, uh, later level questing uh, with supplemented by grinding uh, comp and then this right here this is the uh, AoE grinding focused comp uh, you're going really deep into destruction while still keeping the same palette spec this is more so just focused on just mainly only AoE grinding um, I don't like this one because like I said earlier I don't like AoE 
I don't like grinding focused comps, uh, but this one's still very, very strong if that's your cup of tea. Paladin Warrior. Okay. This one is a really awesome comp. This is what I'm going to be doing on Classic when it comes out. Um, this is, now we're getting into the high tier. We've left the top tier. These comps are very strong, but still not insane. So, pros. Great AoE capability. Sweeping Strikes, Cleave, Whirlwind, Consecrate, Red Aura, etc., etc. This is really nice. Really, really nice, like, up-close melee uh, AoE comp. Uh, helps Warrior with the downtime due to mana efficient healing and the Warrior being based on Rage. The Warrior never has to drink because he doesn't have mana. So he's ju he just gets a heal from the Paladin and then he can keep going. He can keep pulling nonstop. Keep going. Uh, attack power buffs, really nice for added DPS. Battle Shout, Blessing of Might. Double Plates, very durable. Uh, very survivable comp. You can sort take a lot of hits. Um, extremely strong chain pulling potential. Uh, kind of what I said about the uh, Warrior downtime. Like he doesn't need to drink. Um, the Paladin can just toss him a heal, uh, like top him off, and then he can just keep going. Even while the Paladin's drinking, you can just keep going, keep pulling nonstop, never stopping really. Um, when I'm when I've done this uh, this comp in practice with my partner, uh, we've basically never had downtime. We have downtime maybe like once or twice every five levels. Like it's insane how little downtime we have. Like I I have to drink like one like once or twice every couple levels. Like it's it's crazy. Uh, one of the best duos to transitions into dungeons. So this is a big deal. This is kind of like the uh, Paladin Druid. You can find dungeons really easily with this comp. Because you can be like, yo, tank healer, looking for 3 DPS for dungeon. And then you'll fill up like that. You know, like, it's it's crazy uh, how like how badly people want tanks and healers for early dungeons. And even later dungeons. Once you hit 60, if you, like, tell other people that are 60, like, hey, we got a tank and healer ready to go do BRD or Strat or Skolo, like, You'll fill up really fast. So this is a really nice uh, duo, not only for leveling, but also preparing for endgame. Uh, cons. It has some issues early on to, like... Due to, like, the warrior not having a lot of his skills yet. Um, so, they're, like, I would say, like... 1 to late teens, early... Uh, like, around 19, 18 19. Uh, it's really just the paladin carrying the warrior uh, all the way. But once you hit, like, 20, 21... It's easy peasy all the way to 60, easy mode. Um, and that's kind of a pro of this comp is that I actually didn't list it on here. This is a very easy comp to pull off. Um, I think, like, Warrior Priest is a little better, but I still think um, uh, Warrior Paladin is way easier. So that's, that's a big pro of this comp is that it's way easier than, uh, than a lot of comps. Very similar weapon and armor class due to, uh, like, them but like the warrior and the paladin wearing plate and mail and then both using two handers mostly um so that's kind of a downside but even then uh i actually found myself a lot of time rolling on cloth gear <laughs> while leveling in this duo because i just want the mana and the spirit and whatnot while he wants the most of the mail and strength and stuff because i'm just healing a lot of the time a lot of the time i'm just sitting there healing watching him um i mean i'll go up and swing and stuff and you know my dps is still not bad but um you can actually look past the same gear if the Paladin's getting more like Priest gear, you know? You can do that. Paladin healing sort of mana inefficient until Flash of Light level 20. This is kind of what I was saying earlier about, um, like, this comp really popping off in the early 20s. Because once you get Flash of Light, you can just go ham with this comp nonstop with no downtime. Uh, Holy Light, early ranks of Holy Light suck big time. They are really bad for, uh, for healing. Uh, so once you get flash of light, it's really easy. All right, these are the uh, the specs that um, that me and my partner are using for our duo on a classic. Uh, the one on the left is what I'm doing. I'm basically doing uh, uh, holy red all the way down to. You don't have to go into um, sanctity or I just do it for my DPS. Uh, but or you like you don't have to go that far into uh, to get the two handed spec as well. Uh, but you can. That's just what I'm doing personally because around that time I want to be rotating between my two like like for me personally I like using uh, Red Aura if we're AoEing and then Sanctity Aura if we're doing more single targets so I can do more damage uh, so you can just rotate between the two and then besides that you're just mostly going all into Holy and then for the uh, Warrior very standard uh, arms down to Mortal Strike and then Fury 20 points in there Paladin Priest so this is a really good uh, really really strong underrated duo in my opinion um, you're basically maximizing your holy damage, which is really awesome. You're basically having a tank paladin with a support priest. Um, so the pros. 
priests benefit a lot from blessing of wisdom, and paladin, uh, the paladin benefits a lot from priest buffs like uh, fortitude, etc., etc. Um, able to abuse holy damage. This is kind of like the strat with this duo. Is able to abuse holy damage and put out insane DPS through sanctity aura, judgment of the crusader. So, what you're doing basically is you're judging the uh, judging crusader on targets while you have sanctity aura up, and the priest is just mashing smite and holy fire and doing insane damage through that while the paladin's just sitting there tanking the mob. Uh, it's actually really awesome. Uh, you can do some insane damage. Um, very little downtime with Spirit Tap plus Priest Heals, really nice. Uh, can chain pull quite well if the Paladin pulls big packs while the Priest blasts them all down with Smite. So you can be smiting for some insane amounts, especially if you're critting, if you get your crit chance up, like your Holy Crit, uh, like put points in the Holy Crit and whatnot, uh, like you can do some insane damage with Smite. Cons, early levels are very, very weak. So this duo doesn't pop off till like the late 20s, early 30s, when you can get um, improved uh, Seal the Crusader and um, uh, Sanctity Aura. But once you do, it's insane how strong this comp is. Um, but yeah, the early levels, early to mid levels, very, very weak. This uh, comp pop, it pops off a lot later compared to most uh, comps, but still very strong, in my opinion. This is the spec I would recommend uh, Discipline uh, Holy with a Ret Paladin. Um, now, before you ask, I know why Blackout in the, the Shadow Tree. The reason for that being is that if they get stunned from Blackout, the uh, ret, the Ret Paladin can blast them with uh, Seal of Command and do insane extra damage. So that's that's a nice upside. Um, but besides that, you're just mostly going very deep into Holy, getting Holy Nova and a couple other things, and then just putting the rest down into Discipline. While Ret, you're basically going full Ret with a couple points into Protection. Double Paladin. This comp is not bad. Uh, I'm not going to do it uh, on Classic because I think it's kind of whack, but some people like it. Uh, it has really strong AoE. Uh, that's kind of like the main focus of it. Um, all aspects of the class are covered. Once the paladin, one Paladin goes like Prot Holy, the other goes like Red Holy, etc. Et you can do whatever you want. Um, but you can basically cover all of your... basically your classes, like, specs with this. Like, you can have two people with hybrid specs. Like, it, it, it covers, like, itself very well. Um, multiple blessings is really nice. Multiple auras is really nice. Both get free mounts at 40. That's also awesome. Similar, although not the same gearing, though. That's a big con. Uh, kind of like what I said with the warrior, though. Like, where one's getting cloth and the other's getting mail. You can kind of do that, but you're still mostly going to be needing the same things here with this comp, which kind of sucks. Slow kill speed if you aren't AoEing. Um, auto attacking a lot. You've seen the memes of Paladins auto attacking their way to 60, etc., etc. Um, so that's kind of a downside. But, uh, it's not that bad. Um, like, the A-Wing in this comp is pretty strong. Uh, very little ability to deal with ranged targets. Casters are a problem. Uh, so, you kind of have to just run up and smack casters, and then that can pull other casters, and that just create a whole string of bad problems um, with this. Because you don't have, like, as much, like, solo DPS as a warrior who can just charge in there and pull a bunch of things and then just get healed through it. Um... So this this comp is basically like a worse version of Paladin Warrior with uh, some more bl uh, like a more defensive version I guess you could call it more passive version. Uh, oh yeah, so for I'm only including the specs for the um, the the top and high tier classes uh, for the mid and lower tier classes or like comps and whatnot. I'm not going to include the specs. You can kind of just figure it out from there. Uh, I don't really like there's so many ways you can do it and some of these classes I'm not too knowledgeable about specking about I kind of just refer to good players about uh, how they would do it uh, so I'm not going to include those in here Paladin Mage pretty strong at AoEing uh, like Frost AoE plus Protection AoE it's really nice Paladin can tank the packs while the uh, Mage is just sitting there in the back just casting their Frost AoE um, Blessing Wisdom is really nice for Mage Arcane Int is nice for Paladin um, although Blessing Wisdom isn't going to help too much, in all honesty, because if you're doing big, chunky AoE pulls to make this duo worth it, then um, you're going to be drinking after every big pull anyway. So, that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, cons. Mage is honestly... Honestly, the Mage is better off solo uh, in this duo, in my opinion. I think solo Mage is insane. Um, I think Joanna said, in his opinion, uh, solo Mage is the fastest way to level... Like, solo mage AoE grinding is the fastest way to level in the whole game. Um, but uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, please let me know if I am. If I am, I'm sorry. Uh, 
but I'm like very sure he said that. But um, so cons, yeah. Uh, Mage is honestly better off solo. Lots of downtime due to having to drink constantly. That's a big downside. Um, the amount of mobs you need to pull to make the duo efficient is very risky. Uh, so like this can go this this can go south very easily. Like if you're doing like if you pull too much, uh, it can go ham because the paladin doesn't have a healer. So he's kind of risking putting himself at risk by if you guys don't kill everything fast enough or if you pull too much and you can't control it. Uh, the mage has a lot of really nice um, like ways to CC mobs and slow them or what whatever if you need to escape and get out of there, but it's still it's a little risky. Um, like it, like it wouldn't be risky if the amount of mobs you need to pull to make this worth doing wasn't so much, if that makes sense. Um, but then again, that's just my opinion. Paladin Rogue. So Paladin Rogue is not terrible. Um, I wouldn't re definitely wouldn't recommend it, but I think Rogue plus any class that can hold aggro or just keep the, the mob, the mobs back to the Rogue is very strong um, for at, at least as far as Rogue comps go. Blessing of Kings or improved Blessing of Might uh, are very strong for rogues. Early level brackets are very strong, very, very strong. That's probably when this comp is the strongest, is like early levels, like 1 to 20. Um, because the Paladin just doesn't some insane threat early on that he can just always keep the ro the mobs back turned to the rogue and you can just one shot things basically. Um, downtime is very low because the kill speed's so fast, but you're still having to drink a good bit because the Paladin's, uh, of course, using mana. Uh, falls off very hard around the mid 20s. Um, mid level zones very very hard, uh, especially in later levels when you're not able to uh, cheese things out with backstab and ambush as much. Because like in and then like the early levels and like the mid early levels, um, you can literally just like like one or two shot things as a rogue in this comp. Like the paladin opens up with like auto attack, like seal of righteousness or seal of command, builds that huge threat. Then the rogue just ambush backstab dead. Like, it's, it's crazy. Um, rogue provides nothing to the Paladin, solely there for burst CPS. This is the con for most Rogue uh, duos, though. Uh, but it can still be pretty cheesy and pretty good. Um, and then, of course, later levels, it's it's a lot rough, because the Rogue's pulling a lot more, getting hit a lot more, and uh, that's not what you want in any kind of Rogue duo, so that's, that's kind of a downside. Uh, it's still, it's not bad, uh, but... I would, like, if I was doing this comp, I would just split off and go solo. I, like, I would do, abuse this to, like, 24, 23, just abuse the cheese and then say, all right, man, it was good fun, but I'm going to go solo from now and then split up. That's probably the better way to do it, honestly, or that's the faster way. It's not as fun, but it's it's fast. Paladin Hunter. So this is the last one. This is kind of the worst one, in my opinion. Uh, there's not really much to say here. Blessing of Kings on the Hunter is pretty nice. Blessing of Might on Pets is pretty nice. Um, Paladin can tank the mobs so that the hunter's always uh, like attacking from a range, which is awesome because you never want things to be in your dead zone. But uh, they're kind of doing that anyway with their pet. They're kind of like if the hunter knows what they're doing, they're kind of just keeping the mob at a distance from them anyway. Uh, so the cons, you know, they're, the hunter's kind of more efficient solo. Actually, not kind of. It's just they're just better because they're just so good solo. Um, Paladin's kill speed is a burden on the hunter's speed. The Paladin's DPS doesn't really help very much for the hunter. The hunter can kind of just... Like, basically, most of the cons is just, why not... Like, why would you do this over just playing solo? Like, why? Like what's in it for the hunter, basically? That's basically what the, the cons of this, uh, this duo end up being. Uh, can't use Aspect of the Cheetah while leveling because he has to stay up with... The, like, stay alongside the Paladin. Um, and... Lastly, uh, the hunter would keep the same play style if he or she were solo. Like, he would still use the pet to tank the mob at a distance so that it wasn't in their dead zone. So, not much there. Not a very good comp. If someone proves me wrong with some insane pally hunter tech, like, please by all means do it. That that would sound really cool. Like a dwarf hunter and a dwarf paladin, It'd be super cool. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to see that if someone could pull it off. But uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I really appreciate you sitting here listening to me ramble, mess up my words and everything to uh, <laughs> explain my opinions on Paladin Duo Leveling. Um, I really appreciate the support. This is what I'm going to be doing on Classic, and I'm really, really, really excited. Paladin Duo Leveling is so much fun. Like, solo Paladin Leveling has got really boring for me, but um, as soon as me and my friend uh, 
Storm the Gates, like, started talking and setting up, like, coordinating our duo. Like, oh, dude, it's so much fun. So much fun. So, Paladin, definitely one of, like I said earlier, the holy trinity of duo leveling. One of the three strongest duo leveling classes for support, tanking, etc., etc., in the entire game. Um, so, I would definitely recommend it if you guys are looking to duo level really fast. Um, so, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section uh, or join my guild's Discord uh, if you want. Uh, you can ask questions in there. Um, I'm down to talk or discuss about whatever. Prove me wrong on some things. I probably said some things that were wrong about some classes. F please feel free to correct me. I will take any constructive criticism. I'm more than welcome to hear it. Um, so, yeah, that's really all I have to say. If you guys like this, uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, if you guys really like it, then I'll think about making uh, another one for some other classes. But uh, until then, see you later.